Our next presenter is Cotton Estes. She's an architect. Yeah. She launched her architecture pro practice in 2018 after a five-year ten tenure with Lake Flato Architects. Her San Antonio-based work has received regional and national recognition for its innovative approach to urban infill. Before moving to Texas, Cotton received a Thomas J. Watson Fellowship to study repurposed industrial buildings in Eastern Europe. A decade later, her longstanding interest in industrial architecture met its match in San Antonio. It's called the Space Station. Hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming and to the organizers of this amazing event. I'm so honored to be here. Uh, Tonight, I'll share a story about a building just around the corner from here, one block away. This is a story about imagination. For me, the story began back in 2008 with a grant to study how ex-industrial buildings were being transformed across Eastern Europe. At the time, there weren't many examples in the US, but there were in Europe, where materials are expensive and land is scarce. So with a pencil, camera, and a meal budget of $5 a day, I set out in search of places like this. These structures were built to last, with durable materials, natural daylight, and vast spaces. I visited a coal refinery turned world-class art museum, a rail yard turned circus school, Many sites were still vacant, with room for the imagination to fill the pages of my notebook. In these transformations and imaginations, I found a strong sense of hope. This optimism is what led me to architecture and ultimately to San Antonio. Thank you to Thomas J. Watson Foundation for this formative experience and the great many people I couch surfed with along the way. <laughs> a decade later, I began my own architecture practice and a long search for a place to hang my shingle. At the height of the pandemic and Storm Yuri no less, my life partner Mike and I saw an opportunity to house both of our small businesses. The wheels began turning. The building was constructed as a transfer station in 1948. Semi-trailer trucks would line both sides of the building and load goods through a series of garage doors. It had been boarded shut and was surrounded by asphalt, barbed wire, mounds of concrete, and Bermuda grass. Most recently, the building was used by the bus company Coach USA to store spare tires. The city valued this building, get this, at $3,000. The folks from Coach were bemused, if not totally mystified, by our unbridled enthusiasm. <laughs> it was a simple building, and so was our concept. We would open the doors. Free from trucks, the building could now become a filter for daylight, breezes, and connections to a radically different type of landscape. <clears throat> This was a great day, proof of concept. We opened the doors and saw how the building could transform from a solid mass into an open pavilion. Suddenly the building felt twice as big and the landscape or parking lot, I should say, came into clear focus. <clears throat> 400 years ago, this site was likely part of an expansive prairie ecosystem which is now endangered. Could prairie grow again here on such a tough site? See, prairie grasses are no ordinary grass. What you see is only the tip of the iceberg. These deep-rooted plants are excellent for sequestering carbon, restoring soil, and mitigating the effects of flooding and urban heat islands, just to name a few of their many benefits in an urban context like this. And so began a major experiment. <laughs> mm. 
We clean the site, spread 400 cubic yards of mulch, eliminated invasive species for two years, seeded the natives, and then we weeded and watched and weeded and never forget to stop weeding. <laughs> While we waited for the grass to grow, we began to see the building as a cloud floating on a field. Thanks, Nate. <laughs> it would be ever-changing, animated by light, season, and the creative work happening inside. We made space for the imagination. The monochrome exterior emphasizes the play of shadow and the colors of the prairie. Perforated garage doors provide security and make the building read either as opaque or transparent, depending on the light. Loading dock porches cantilever over the swaying grass. Years of industrial use give this building its character, like its unique vaulted concrete ceiling or this hole that was so unceremoniously cut through the roof. The hole looks much the same today, but it no longer rains inside. Minimal finishes complement the building's texture. We took care to conceal the weatherproofing and building systems so that the original structure rains cleanly, almost like a ruin. There's plenty of space on the walls for drawings. This past solstice, we celebrated the opening of the space station. Hooray! It's now home to a small community of architects, carpenters, urban designers, dogs, and a growing number of birds, butterflies, and bees. It is a work in progress. The space station is a truck depot turned creative space, a parking lot turned prairie. It's just one of a growing number of great reuse projects in San Antonio. The Pearl is one, one obvious recent world-class example. Yet there is still so much underutilized space in this city. How about this incredible power plant on the river south? Or the insane amount of surface parking downtown? Can you just imagine if one quarter of the downtown was converted to parks with surface temperatures, temperatures lowered by some 40 degrees? So. I think this is a big part of what makes the city so exciting to be a part of. I also think these opportunities are what makes San Antonio uniquely poised to answer 21st century challenges of urban growth and climate change. There's space for the imagination here and reason for hope. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cotton. That was amazing. Thank you. I love what you did with the place. <laughs> um, can you tell me maybe another building that you maybe have your eye on or that you think about sometimes that you're like, man, I'd really like to get my hands on that. <laughs> oh, there are so many. Um, uh, well, that one, that one that I did show a slide of, um, I, I worked for about five years on, while at Lake Plato uh, with Jennifer Young, who I saw in the audience tonight. And um, it's, I mean, it is stunning. It's a, inside that building is a five-story turbine hall. The space is so vast that it's almost like you hear the turbines still humming. Um, so I, I can't wait to see what someone does there. Okay. And then also, the last time we met, I noticed that you were on a bicycle. And I was wondering, because I drive a lot, so sometimes when I'm in the passenger seat, I'm like, well, I didn't know that was there. Whoa, I didn't know that was there. So I was wondering if being on a bicycle gives you a different perspective on things that you see around, if that helps at all with your like, dreaming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, bikes are so much fun. When I was in Eastern Europe, I was on foot, which is even slower and gives you more of an opportunity to look around as you go. Um, when I first moved to the city, now about 11 years ago, 
I, I went on these aimless bike tours to, intent, to get lost and use my nose to discover new parts of the city because you notice so much more um, when you're immersed in the environment like that and, and it's really fun. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing your vision and your space. That was awesome. Thank you.